What if I told you choosing not to use subject pronouns in your conversations in Spanish will not only slow your learning process, but will also hold you back in understanding context in conversation? Let's discuss. In this video, I'm going to show you what Spanish subject pronouns are, how they play a crucial role in conversations, and why these simple words will have you instantly understand in Spanish in context. But before we get started, I want to make sure you download the free copy of the guided notes on subject pronouns so that you'll have something to go back and look at as well as work on some additional activities that I've provided for you in those notes. So make sure you go into the description below and click the link for your free copy of the Spanish subject pronouns. Let's get started. Let me give you an example of what I mean when you don't use subject pronouns in creating questions or statements in Espanol. ¿Tiene planes para mañana? Sí, va a visitar el nuevo museo en el centro. Después piensa almorzar en aquel café que abrió recientemente al lado del parque. ¿Qué? King. And then watch the instant change you see in context when they are used. Él tiene planes para mañana. Sí, él va a visitar el nuevo museo de arte en el centro. Después, él piensa almorzar en aquel café que abrió recientemente al lado del parque. Oh, está bien. Dile a él buen viaje, por favor. Nos vemos. A few years back, someone got the bright idea that teaching Spanish subject pronouns was a thing of the past and was no longer needed or important for those that were trying to learn to speak Spanish. It was even suggested that Spanish teachers should focus on providing students with chunk phrases so that they could just memorize them and use them accordingly. There's nothing wrong with that concept. However, the problem was that many students struggled to connect the dots. They couldn't understand who or what was doing the action in these statements or questions. So what was a quick fix? Include subject pronouns into the chunked phrases. Okay, antes de mirar los pronombres sujetos, necesitamos recordar la información por qué necesitamos los pronombres sujetos. So before we look at the subject pronouns in Espanol, I want to make sure we understand the reasons as to why we have to use them, right? So let's take a look over here. So razón número uno, we use subject pronouns to talk about people doing actions. If we don't want to mention their names, right? Or a noun that describes them. Por ejemplo, el hombre, la mujer, el señor, la señora, el niño, la niña. If we don't want to talk about those people from a noun perspective and we don't want to use their names, vamos a usar los pronombres sujetos. Okay, razón número dos. Se usa un pronombre sujeto to replace a name or a noun. So we just talked about that, right? So we can use subject pronouns to show people doing in action, or we can use them to replace a name or a noun, like what we talked about a few seconds ago. Y razón número tres, ¿por qué necesitamos los pronombres sujetos? Why do we need to use subject pronouns? To avoid repetition, right? Instead of me saying, you know, John woke up this morning, John went to the bathroom, John washed his face, John brushed his teeth. I get tired of saying John, right? So we can throw in the word he, right? And that's what we're talking about right here. Okay, mira. By the way, soy profe don Omar. And if you want to find out the easiest and most effective ways to acquire Spanish, you've come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe so you catch every lesson, tip, and strategy to help you speak Spanish now. Now let's find out why subject pronouns are crucial for your development in Espanol. Los pronombres sujetos singulares. We're going to start off with the singular subject pronouns. We're talking about one person at a time, okay? What? I did, I did this. One person at a time, right? If I'm talking about my Myself, yo voy a usar la palabra yo, yo. Make sure you're saying this with me, yo. Some people say yo, you will encounter both. Yo, yo, just depends on the person. Some people give you a soft J sound on it. Don't know why. Some people give you a Y sound on it, okay? Tomato, tomato, still means the same thing. Por ejemplo, y también tenemos una oración con la palabra yo. All right, so we've got a sentence that goes along with this. Now, what we want to understand is, remember we talked about chunking, right? We can use chunking. Remember, we just give you a phrase and you kind of just take that phrase in and you memorize it. Well, we're just adding one word in, which is yo. Yo significa I, right? So watch this. Let's see if you can figure this out. I'm just going to give you the sentence. There might be a word in English, but see if you can figure this out. Yo como tacos. I'm pretty sure you can figure that out, right? I eat tacos. 
El próximo pronombre sujeto. The next subject pronoun. Tú. Tú. Pretty easy. We can look at that. We can say it. Tú. Right? Tú significa you in a familiar way. Right? We've got to make sure we remember when to use tú. Okay? When to use tú. And we're talking about people we know. We've known them for a while. They may be younger than us. Their colleagues, their family, their friends. That's when we're going to use tú. Tú vives en Florida. Tú vives en Florida. Probably can figure that out, right? You live in Florida. Buen trabajo. Bien hecho. All right, vamos a continuar. El próximo pronombre sujeto, él. Él ve el agua. Él ve el agua. Pretty sure I don't even have to tell you what this means. I think you got it. El próximo pronombre sujeto, tenemos ella. Ella. Remember, two L's make a Y or a soft J sound. Once again, depends on who you come across. Ella. Or ella, wherever you are, tomato, tomato, right? This is not Ella, right? Ella is somebody's name. That's a young woman's name or a lady's name. Ella also is the word that we use in Portuguese to say she. But in Espanol, cuando tenemos doble L, two L's, two L's make either a soft J sound or a Y sound. Something we have to know about pronunciation in Espanol. If you don't know about that, I've got a link in the description below that talks about Spanish pronunciation for certain letters in el alfabeto español. Ella ve el cielo. Ella ve el cielo. She sees the sky. El próximo pronombre sujeto, the next subject pronoun, usted. Usted. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's the difference between tú and usted? Why can't I just use tú? Well, usted is in a situation, if you remember or if you don't know, perfectly fine. Usted is when you're talking to somebody you don't know or you're meeting them for the first time, somebody you want to show respect to, and somebody that's usually older than you, okay? Those are the three pretty much guidelines that you can use when you need to determine when do I need to use usted. I'm going to use it in those three scenarios. Vamos a practicar con la palabra. Usted ve... Un barco. Usted ve un barco. You see a boat. Now we've got multiple words for boat. Just the first word that I chose to use here. But usted ve un barco. Y ahora vamos a continuar con los pronombres sujetos plurales. Now we have the plural subject pronouns. Talking about two or more people. Nosotros. Yo y otra persona. Otra persona y yo. Right? Another person and I. Nosotros. Now, I know you're looking at this like, bro, this is not even a letter. Hey, it's an ampersand, right? At sign for some people. All right. Basically, I do this because I don't like to take up a lot of space with words. That word could either be nosotros with an OS. Notice the O. O también podemos usar nosotras with the A here. All right. Now, what's the difference? You might be asking. Nosotros is when we're talking about a group of guys or it's a mixed group between chicos y chicas. Boys and girls, hombres y mujeres, all right? Could be men and women, nosotros. Pero cuando necesitamos hablar sobre las mujeres, when we need to talk about only women, tenemos que usar la palabra nosotras, all right? So if you're including yourself, you happen to be a, a woman, you would say las señoras y yo, right? Nosotras, blah, blah, blah. If you were a guy and it was a bunch of women, it could be, you know, 42 million women. Exaggeration, I know. And you might be the only guy. Que bien. Muy suerte. Pero, vamos a decir nosotros. Why? Because there's one guy. And even if there's one guy, it's the opposite gender. We have to include that. So we have to say nosotros. If it was one woman and 30 guys, it's got to be nosotros. Why? Because we have to take account for the guys in that group. So we've got to include that. If it's all women... Nosotras. Okay, I think we got it. Vamos a continuar. Nosotros nadamos en el océano. Nosotros nadamos en el océano. Nadamos. So what do you think we're saying here? Nosotros nadamos en el océano. What the word nosotros is. I give you the action, nadamos. Make it make sense. The whole reason why I'm not trying to give you the exact translation is because I want you to kind of utilize the subject pronoun that we have and what you're seeing here. And by the way, I've color coded the endings. 
Notice how they match up, okay? If you're not paying attention to that, let's go back and start over again in the video and make sure you look at what is matching up with the particular subject pronouns that you see on the screen. Vamos a continuar. La próxima. Ellos, ellas. Significa they in inglés. Ellos, ellas. Once again, two L's make a Y sound or a soft J sound. You can come across both, right? Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Whatever. Ellos, ellos. Hey. Your world, okay? Once again, we've got the ampersand here. If it's all guys and girls, a mixed group, ellos. If it's all guys and we're saying they, ellos. If it's all women and I want to say they, I would use ellas. Ellas toman el sol. Ellas toman el sol. Toman el sol. You know how they got that thing on the beach when they fold it out and it's like reflective. Ellas toman el sol. Right? What are they doing? Right? Let you work with that. Figure it out. Let me know in the comment section below if you know what I'm talking about when I say ellas toman el sol. Okay, big one right here. Vosotros o vosotras. Now, I know what you're thinking. Let's just skip right over that. Can't technically do that, okay? We can, but we're not, because I need you to know what it is, just in case. You never know who you're gonna come across in life, right? So, vosotros o vosotras is another way, or is one way, that we could say y'all or you all in Espanol. It's the more familiar way of saying y'all or you all in España, in Spain. Is it utilized in Latin America? I'm sure somebody uses it. It's not prevalent. It's only when Spaniards come to Latin America more than likely, or they learn Castellano and they come to Latin America. They are the ones that are normally using it. Por ejemplo, vosotros, remember that's a guy and some women, mixed group, or it could be all guys. And I say, oh, y'all are going to the store, like we say here in the South, right? But if it's all women, I want to say, oh, y'all are going to the store, I would use vosotras. Mixed group, vosotros. All guys, vosotros. All ladies, vosotras. Got it? Get it? Good. Mira, tenemos un ejemplo. What are we saying there? Vosotros descansáis. I think you can figure that one out. Remember, vosotros means you all or y'all in a familiar way. Ustedes. Now, this is the one that you probably remember from, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, college. Ustedes, right? Look at that word. Ustedes. Usted, right? Oh, you formal. Okay, okay, okay. Ustedes. Yes on a word. Plural, right? Cool. You all. In España, you all in a formal way. You all in a formal way. Is there a way to make this word masculina or femenina? No. Ustedes. It is what it is, right? There's no way we don't change the, the E to an O or an A. We leave it the way it is. Pero, in Latino America, we use this as our form of vosotros, vosotras, that they use in España. Ustedes is our relaxed way of saying you all or y'all in Latin America. Formal in España. But before we land this plane, can you tell me the three reasons that we need to use subject pronouns in Espanol? Which one of these three reasons stand out to you the most? Let me know in the comments what your answers are to these two questions. I like to leave you with a power tip after each lesson, and today's power tip is this. If you're struggling with verb conjugations in any tense in Espanol, it's okay to go back to the drawing board and start over incorporating subject pronouns to help you get the pattern down of which subject pronoun goes with which conjugated verb in a statement or a question. Until you master the small things, i.e. knowing the subject verb agreement with the correct conjugations in Espanol, don't be in a rush to move on so quickly. Rome was not built in a day. Take your time to become an expert with the small things in Espanol, then move on to the next challenge in front of you. Wait, you say you want more? You want more? I got more for you. No, not really. We're not gonna keep going in this video. If you're like me, you need a break, right? So what I want you to do is make sure you have the free PDF that goes along with this video, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing is this. 
I want you to check out the original version of the video I did on subject pronouns. You can click right here in the video and I'll see you over there. Nos vemos.